In this video I will show you how to render efficiently 100,000 rows inside React. At some point of developing React applications you will for sure have problem that you need to render lots of data on the screen and you can't really just render it because it is not performant. You can't throw in browser, doesn't matter which framework, 100,000 DOM elements and think that it will be fast because it won't. And in React we have different solutions for that. The oldest and most popular library is for sure React Virtualized. It can not only solve this problem but has lots of additional features that realistically are out of scope of rendering a list. Another library from the same author is React Window. It is newer library and it is smaller. Realistically here you are getting the core how this library should work and the author stripped away all stuff which is not really related to functionality and made API better. Another library which is slightly less popular is called React Virtuoso and my favorite library is 10 Stack Virtual. And if you don't know about 10 Stack, these are a lot of different libraries which are fully covered with TypeScript on a really good level and they have an amazing API. And the most popular library in this list is for sure React Query, which a lot of people are using to work efficiently with API inside React and synchronize API data to their components. This is why it is worth to mention that TenStack Virtual plays really nicely together with React Query and I will show you how. So what is TenStack Virtual? It is a library which works for a lot of frameworks like React, Vue, Solid, Svelte and so on which means it is framework agnostic. Another important point is that this library is a CDK. It doesn't have any styling or any prepared components inside for us in comparison to all other solutions. And I think it's a big plus because realistically in 99% of the cases you want custom markup and custom styling. And if you get it from the library then for sure you will override it later. So our first step here will be to jump to the console and install 10 stack React Virtual. And additionally to generate some fake data because we need lots of data to render lots of elements I want to use a library fakerjs slash faker. After this as you can see in my app tier 6 and as you can see I generated React with the TypeScript because it plays so nicely with 10 stack I have a simple list. And the main idea is that here we want to render a big predefined number of elements. So let's have a look here. This is just an empty component and some styling that I prepared. And in order to bring 10 stack virtual to our component, we want to create here row virtualizer by calling hook use virtualizer. And as you can see, it is coming from 10 stack react virtual. Now inside we must provide a configuration. First of all the count of elements and as you can see here we are getting a nice autocomplete for all properties because it is fully covered with the TypeScript. Let's say that here we want to render 10,000 elements. The next thing here we must provide a reference to our parent. We don't have it yet, this is where let's create it. So our parent reference is just a reference to the DOM node of our list. This is where here use ref now because we didn't create it yet. And I want to provide here it with get scroll element, which will be a function and it returns for us parent reference current. After this, we are providing estimated size, which is the height of our element. Let's say that every single element is 35 pixels. And again, as you can see, it's a function. And the last one here is overscan, and I want to provide here 5. What is overscan? It is a property which tells how many items of list we want to render on the top and on the bottom. Now I want to prepare here some user data that we want to render on the screen. So let's generate an array users by calling your array and providing the 10,000 elements. And here I will write fill true to simply fill the array. And now we want to map every single element and return a string from it. And here I want to use faker. This is why here I imported faker on the top from faker.js faker and we can use it like faker.person.fullName. And here it will generate for us a full name as you can see in such format. Like for example, Alan Brown. Let's have a look on our users now. 
I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have lots of advanced courses on different web technologies where we create real applications and prepare for the interviews. You can find the link in the description box below. Now let's jump back into the video. As you can see in browser, we are getting an array of our users with random users from Faker, and we have 10,000 elements. This is just fine, now we want to render this list and make it performant. This is why here I want to return our markup, and we are starting with div class name container. This is our container for the list, and as you can see, we created here parent ref. We must attach it here. So reference, parent reference. After this, we need to render our list. So div class name list. And here we must render the full height of the whole list. This is why here inside style, I'm providing height property. And here we're rendering it from property row virtualizer that we already created dot get total size. And this is a function which returns the total height. And after this, it will be pixel. So we provided the full height of the whole container. And now inside we want to render all our items. And in order to do that, we're using row virtualizer dot get virtual items. And we can just map and get virtual row. So what is virtual row? This is every single user for us. So here we need a div to render a user. And we're providing here a key. And our key will be virtual row dot index. And every index is unique. Now inside this div we want to render our user information, so we can just get here a user because this index inside virtual row is the same like an index inside users. So we can just get from users virtual row dot index. And the last thing that we need to provide here is some styling. So first of all we must set a height for every single element, and here will be also a variable virtual row dot size. And after this, it will be pixels. So we must wrap this variable in a string. After the height, we also must provide a transform because all these items will be rendered with position absolute. So here it must be translate y. And inside we have our variable, which will be virtual row dot start. And it is also with pixels. So this is how we're using this library. Let's have a look in browser. I'm reloading the page, and as you can see, the list is rendered there. But we are missing some classes to make it beautiful. This is why here after key, let's provide a class name. And here I want to have a string, because we will have some logic. First of all, we need here a row class. But additionally, I want to check which index we have. I want to mark odd numbers and even numbers. This is why here, when index of the row is odd, we want to apply class list item odd. And in other case, I want to apply class list item even. And if you're curious from where these classes are coming, here I created this list item even. Let's check in browser. As you can see, the whole list is rendered. But what I want to do now, I want to jump to the CSS and additionally to overflow auto on container, I want to set height, for example, 500 pixels. Let's have a look again. As you can see, our container is just 500 pixels, but inside we have a scrollable container of huge height. And now when we're scrolling, you can see that we have a scroll for this container. And when we're checking our list in the DOM, it is not huge. We're rendering here less than 20 elements, because we're rendering elements that we see in the container, plus over scan 5 on the top and on the bottom. So in total, we're rendering here like 20 elements or so. Now, when we're scrolling a lot, you can see that these elements are rendered. What is happening with our markup? As you can see, it is not getting bigger because we are still rendering a small amount of elements and all elements which are off screen are not visible. They are removed from the DOM. This is why it is extremely performant. We can scroll as much as we want and it will still render stuff correctly. We can even use scrolly here. And as you can see, we're rendering the list of our users. So now you know how this library is working, but obviously we are not working always with just static data. We typically want to request data from API and render them on the list. And typically for this, we're using a feature which is called infinite loading. We simply add more and more elements when we're scrolling to the bottom of the page. 
but at some point it is not performing because we are getting too many elements on the screen. This is why here we can leverage this library together with React Query. How can we do that? First of all, inside my main TS, I created Query Client from React Query and I've wrapped my whole application with Query Client. This is how we typically use React Query. Now inside my app component, I rendered a sync list and not just simple list. Let's have a look on our async list. This component is much bigger, but the idea is the same. As you can see on the bottom, we have just the same markup. This is a div with parent reference. We are rendering the total height for raw virtualizer. Then we are rendering our virtual items, but here we are getting them from all roles. And these all roles we are getting from React Query. Let's first of all check how it works in browser and then understand the code. I am reloading the page and as you can see first of all there was a loading on the top and then we see our list of data. And as you can see it is exactly infinite loading, when I am scrolling close to the bottom we are getting more and more elements. Additionally here on the page you can see not only names of the users but also this number. This is exactly the offset which we are scrolling and it is increasing. And we have same story here inside our markup, we are not rendering the whole list of the elements, we are rendering like 20 elements or so, which are fitted in this window. Which essentially means I am scrolling more and we are rendering only the elements from the screen. So how it is working at all? And in order to implement that we are using React Query. As you can see here, just for testing instead of API, I created fetch server page function, which is returning the promise with array of rows and the next offset. This is how typically React Query is working when we implement an infinite loader. So this function simply returns a promise, nothing else. This code here is also from React Query and this is use infinite query. So we are doing here an infinite loading and every single time when we are hitting the bottom of the page, we are fetching the next page. And here we have quite similar code with use visualizer where we are providing our count. And our count checks if we have a next page, then we are taking the length of all our rows plus one, in other case it's the total of our total items. And here is the logic with our use effect when we need to refetch the page. So we are simply checking if we need to call fetch new page when we scrolled to the bottom of the page. So as you can see 10 stack virtual works amazingly together with React Query to render even 100,000 roles in your application. And if you want to learn more about React and stack and how you can implement 10 stack router in your React application, make sure to check this video also.